give you a picture of what being captured by grace is. I just captured her by grace. This is the Lord's heart towards you. You know, uh, I think the Lord gave us kids so they could give us grandkids. You got a different, you know, they're different. I don't know why. They're different. But, uh, I, I, you know, I couldn't wait. When I seen Whitney getting Zoe out of the car out there, I couldn't wait to go get her. I just couldn't wait to see her, couldn't wait to hold her, smell her, kiss her. And in my eyes, she don't do anything wrong. Amen. Now, Whitney gets on to her. Whitney, Whitney said she got in trouble before she got to church. And when she gets in trouble, Whitney gets on to her. I say, Whitney, leave her alone. She's a baby. And I can remember Nana doing that with the grandkids with Grady. And Whitney, y'all can be seated just for a second. I can remember my mama doing that with Grady and Whitney, and I would get on to them, or Sharon would get on to them, and she'd say, leave them alone, leave them alone. And you know what? That's a picture of how the Father is toward us when the law comes after us, you know, like the Ten Commandments or whatever, comes after us and begins to condemn us. I can just hear the Lord saying, leave them alone. Leave them alone. Love never fails. And I guess if the Lord's doing anything for us here, He's teaching us how to love. I don't, I don't think Whitney will mind me saying this, but there was a hard, there was a time when Whitney went through a real hard time in her life, and uh, I repent for my doings in that because what I was, I was hard on Whitney. I was hard, and when Whitney didn't, when Whitney couldn't come to me or her mother because of us being hard, you know where she would always go? She'd go to Mama, and my Mama never turned her away, never. There'd be times Whitney would just sometimes try to slip in the window way late. In the, is it okay if I say this? She would try to slip in the window to slip in to get, just have somewhere to sleep because I turned her out, which was wrong on my part. Don't ever turn your kids away. And one night, Mama said to Whitney, said, she said, Whitney, you don't never have to come in that window. I said, I got a door. Come in the door. And I got to thinking, you know what? That's, that's the heart of Jesus. He's the door. You don't need to come any other way. Just come through Jesus. I don't care what you've done. Just come through Jesus. And I told Mama all the bad things about what Whitney was involved in. She looked at me and she said, I don't care. That's my grandchild. And, I, you know, that's the God. That is God. God will love you regardless. And He'll hold you. And, and look at, the, you know, probably one of the more instrumental people in her life that helped her get turned around was the love of her Nana. And because of love of Mama, guess what? I'm standing here holding Zoe today. Look at this picture right here. This is incredible. And I just felt the Lord want to tell everybody in this room, this is how God, and this ain't even a comparison, but this, this is how God feels about you. I don't even care what you did last night. I don't care what you did before you got here this morning. You've been captured by grace. And God wants to smell you. God wants to hold you. God wants to kiss you on the hand. He don't care. He just wants to love you. Here, she's with her daddy. This thing, you can, you, can, you can stand or sit or whatever, but this, one more time, David, sing that song right there. You've been captured by grace. Captured by grace.
with somebody. Just, just, just say you've been captured by grace. Find you two or three people and just tell them. Solomon said, not many days hence it shall return. It shall return. You know, there was a time in Mama's life right before she passed away. She uh, worked at Oak Ridge back in the 40s. And uh, it was just by the mercy and the grace of God, she, she got awarded, you know, quite a settlement at the end of her days. And that big settlement that she got, Sharon will testify to this, is she turned around and gave every bit of that away. And, and just, just she didn't use a bit of it herself. She gave it away. And it, she reminds me more of the Lord than anybody, you know, I possibly know. Uh, just, just in her giving and her loving. And I told her one day when I was getting on to Whitney about some things, she got on to me. She said, you stop getting on to Whitney. And I said, Mama, when I was growing up, you wore us out. You beat us. You didn't whip us. You beat us. And uh, she said, but I'm wiser now. And uh, I'm glad we're all getting wiser uh, everybody say, we're getting, we're getting wiser. Say, boy, you sure? Say, say bud, you're wiser. <laughs> <laughs> A little humor right there for the rest of you that can't smile. <laughs> bud, you sure are wiser. Anyway, hallelujah. Amen. If you're glad you're here, say, I'm glad I'm here. Amen. Glory. Well, we're going to receive our offering today. Where's my offering to take her uppers? Bro, you not going to help? Yeah. Adam and Andrew can help too if you want to. We don't have Bill to put his, pass his hat. Where's the offer? Back there they are. Did y'all enjoy Brother Bill last week? Yes. He called me this morning and said he sure did enjoy being here and uh, y'all really blessed him and uh, it was an honor for him to be here and an honor to him to be here. So, uh, <laughs> is, uh, who wants to pray? Who wants to speak over our offering today? You mean we'll pray away often? Yeah. She can pray some good prayers too. We got another basket or something that we can. There you go. Let's see, it ain't on or something here. We got a yeah. Father God, thank you for what you do and we love you in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. <laughs> we'll get you to pray over the food too. <laughs> All right, take up the phone there. try to plan something for our kids and do something with their kids this summer also. So uh, we're going to we're going to have a good time. So everybody say amen. amen. You know, I asked Bush this morning, this come up in my heart, uh, he's got a CD that he's 
got a number of songs that he's wrote, incredible CD. And if you can, I don't know if you can, but if you can make some copies of those and put them back there where people can get them. Uh, one of the songs that he's got on there is called One More Time. And uh, I'm going to let him tell you about that next week. But I just had it in my heart to play that song this morning, but I didn't have the CD with me. And uh, next week we'll let Butch uh, play that CD and let him tell you a little bit about that song, however he wants to tell you about it. But it's an incredible song, and it talks about one more time, and, and it's talking about going to the Lord one more time, and the Lord helped him one more time. But you know what I found out? I've been to the Lord, I bet you, a million one more times. Yes. And he's always there. He's never turned me down. And I don't know how much he wants to tell you about his situation with when he wrote that song, but it's an incredible song. The very man that put that in the CD that day, the Lord reached out and grabbed my heart, and I thought, golly, what an incredible song. And it's not right just to... Uh, just to keep that just to a few of us we want that to be made available for everybody even to the to the web to people on the web so anyway we do thank the lord for you uh, you're good 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 people and i appreciate you anybody got anything they want to share this morning before we go any farther you know what i'm finding out is you know when i grew up in the baptist church and i am so thankful for that uh, i learned a lot of great truths in the baptist church uh, but what I'm finding out, I'm sort of gravitating a little bit back to my roots because in the Baptist church, we'd always have that time that we would give people an opportunity to testify. But you know what? They never did testify. They would always get up and talk about what a bad week they had and what the devil was doing. But anyway, I want to give you an opportunity. If you've got anything you want to share about the goodness of the Lord, it's your, it's your few minutes right here. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. And uh, we're still here. Yeah. Thank the Lord. Yeah. yeah. You know, Joe had a miracle Wednesday night. We prayed for him. Uh, he had a lot of fluid on him, and uh, he's he's back, and that fluid's gone, and uh, it's going to be completely and totally gone. Yes. How many pounds do you say was gone, Joe? I weighed 289 when I was over on 272. You see there? That's about 17 pounds, is that right, or something like that? So. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think about it. <laughs> Bam, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, medicine was designed to help you, and it, it usually does help you, but sometimes the long-term effects of medicine is not good. I'm thank God for it because if it wasn't, most of us wouldn't be here. But there is a medicine. There is a bomb in Gilead. His name is Jesus. And uh, eventually he will prevail. So he's prevailing in your body, buddy. I'm telling you this. Anybody else? Yeah. 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 You're you're a different man, Brian. You're a different man. You're a man of grace. Amen. Anybody else? Take the time to 
stop. Mm-hmm. Every day is full of so, so many blessings. Yep. So yeah. much protection and so much love from him, just in the everyday life. That's right, brother. And I think, you know, I was involved in that accident, you know, three or four weeks ago. And it just hit me this morning, I was just thinking, if the driver that I was with had just hesitated one more second and pulled out, that could have been me being know he was there. It was a bad situation, but it could have been really, really, you know, even worse. Yeah. But uh, sometimes we just need to stop him and just think, you know. Man. It, he's not there just sometimes when we need him. He's there all the time. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? We're going to pray for Miss Tammy here in a little bit uh, for her eyes and her. She got a bad headache. She had eye surgery a few weeks ago and it's not doing what it's supposed to do. So we'll just come on up here right now. We pray for you right now. Y'all yeah, come on around her. You can stand and stretch your hands toward her. Hallelujah, Jesus. Here, Sharon, so we pray over her. We're going to grieve with the word of the Lord in your mouth. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to unite with our brothers and sisters and to approach your throne of grace. We approach your throne of grace, God, with the petition that you would reach down your healing hand and that you would touch Tammy's eyes, her head, her body. It's a sanctified body that belongs to you. Yes, Jesus. And we know that she uses it for your glory, God. And, Father, we cannot function sometime without your power and your glory. And that's what we need this morning. We need your grace and we need your glory to fill Tammy from her head to her toes. And whatever this condition is, we need you to abolish it. Yes, Jesus. And only you you can do that. And we put our faith in you and we put our trust in you. And we know, we know, we have no doubt that this will come to pass. Because you are a father, and you are a father of grace. You are a father of healing. You are a father of love. And, Father, we know that as we stand here together, united, that you said that we're one or two come together. And, God, there's more than one or two here that you would be in the midst. And we pray, Lord, that you would be in the midst of this, and you would touch Tammy in a great and a mighty way, in a great and a healing way, and that before she turns around and sits down, that she will feel your grace begin to fill her body. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Anybody else that needs healing that's yes. extended to yes, you? There's something on my nose here. It's not right. You, can, you can't see it, but you can feel it. Mm-hmm. And it won't come off. Yeah. And I want it off and on my face. Yeah. Pray, sure. Sure. Father, we pray that you would touch Margie, touch her face, touch her nose, whatever this is, it's in her body, God, that needs to be gone. We know that you are willing and able to take it away. We petition you, Lord, on Margie's behalf, God. She is a mighty servant of thine. Father, she's filled with grace and she's filled with love and she's filled with glory. And Father, she wants to show that to the world. And Father, she cannot be hindered by anything, Lord, not anything on her face, nose, or anywhere else in her life, that she cannot glorify you and show the world your love and your kindness, Jesus, because she is a woman of love. Father, she's a woman that extends herself beyond all measures for people. And we want you, Lord, to extend yourself to her beyond all measure. In your son's Jesus. name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. Pat your neighbor right there and say, You're the heel of the Lord. Yeah. You're the heel of the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus. All. All means all. We're going to let our kids go back. Uh, what's the what age, Charity? Ten and under go over next door with Charity. I think Whitney's over there too. So we uh, thank the Lord for Miss Charity helping us out. Also, uh, Miss Carol Patterson is doing better. Uh, I talked to her yesterday, and she's doing better, and we praise the Lord for that. And uh, also... Uh, Marsha, some of you know her by cricket, but Marsha is uh, needing some prayer, so we just extend our love and and 
Excuse me. Okay, Marcia. She is a possibility that she's watching. So uh, she's known by cricket. The Lord told me not to call her cricket no more. So you can call her whatever you want to. But anyway, we're going to pray for Marcia and Jim today, in the name of the Lord. Go ahead. Father God, we lift up to you this morning our brother and our sister Marcia and Jim. Father, there is absolutely no distance in the spirit, and right now, by faith, we extend our hands unto her, unto him, Father God, that by your spirit, the very life of Christ that raised Jesus from the dead will rise up and quicken their bodies in the name of Jesus. We speak health, we speak wholeness, we speak life over them today, and Father, we just thank you for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hey, yeah, just for one second... uh, We're going to take a station identification break. Just uh, can we do that just for a second? Tell me when we're ready. Are we back? All right. Uh, that was a station identification break. Welcome back to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, put up my title right there if we're ready to go. Uh, thank you for coming here and being here. Uh, everybody say, God in the garden. God in the garden. God in the garden. Uh, uh, when I say garden, what do, you, what do you automatically, where does your mind go to? Flowers. Flowers, yeah. Adam and Eve. That's what I was looking for, Adam and Eve in the garden. Uh, in the beginning, God created a paradise, a garden. It's called the Garden of Eden. And he put a man and a woman there to keep it and dress it. And they only had one rule to keep. And that one rule was don't eat of a certain tree. Uh, what I found out, wherever there's rules, somebody will break them. Yeah. That's right. yeah. They will break them every single time. But uh, also, it comes to a bigger picture where me and you are now the garden of the Lord. The Song of Solomon, he talks a lot about a garden. And uh, we are the garden of the Lord now. So when I talk about garden, I'm going to talk about the garden of Eden, but I also going to talk about you. Everybody say, God in the garden. God in the garden. Now do this, say, God in the garden. God in the garden. Set you up on that one, so I'm going to tell you this right here. In the uh, Song of Solomon, I think it's chapter number 5, verse number 1. i got an echoey-like thing. In chapter number 5, uh, uh, the Scripture says that God went down in the garden of nuts. So <laughs> everybody said, they even hope for nuts. Can you give me Genesis or a Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse number 1? God in the garden. I think it says the garden of nuts. So sometimes in our nutty conditions, God don't leave us. People will leave you when you get nutty sometimes, and people will abandon you in nutty times. But God will never, God will never, never, ever abandon you in a nutty time. I'm coming to my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drinking my wine with my milk and eat. Uh, I don't think it's the one I'm looking for, the verse I'm looking for. Can you help me out, Tammy? Let's see verse number two, see what verse number two says. Um, No, go to chapter four, the last verse in chapter number four. Maybe that's the verse I'm looking for. I should have looked this up before I got here. Uh, But anyway, it talks about 